Welcome traders to another Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 10th of January with me, Patrick Munley. Starting in the US next week, really uh, inflation remains top of mind with Wednesday's release of US CPI for December. Inflation is set to tick above 7% as measured by the CPI index, despite the month-on-month -month pace of price growth easing from 0.8% to 0.4%. Uh, then at 7 o'clock on Wednesday, the Fed releases its latest edition of the Beige Book, which summarizes financial economic conditions in the US. Uh, back on Tuesday, sorry, um, Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester is due to speak on Bloomberg TV. Uh, following the release of December's minutes and their commentary on some participants viewing the labor market conditions for hiking as being met, commentary from individual members will be key for market pricing of liftoff. Shortly after, Kansas City Fed President Esther George is set to outline her views on the economy and monetary policy. Focus afterwards remains on monetary policy makers, but in a different manner as the Senate Banking Committee meets to hold a hearing on Chair Powell's renomination. It's largely expected to be a smooth reappointment for Powell, given his stance as a dovish Republican Fed chair. To wrap up the day, St. Louis Fed President James Bullard uh, discusses the economy and monetary policy at a virtual event with the Mid-Sized Bank Coalition of America. It is worth noting that all Fed presidents set to speak on Tuesday are voting members in 2022. Then on Thursday, we get US PPI data for December and the latest jobless claims data is released. Also, core PPI is set to rise from 7.7% to 8% as supply chain disruptions continue to bite, while jobless claims data will be viewed in reference to December's non-farm payrolls release. The Senate Banking Committee then reconvenes for a nomination hearing on Leo Brainard's appointment as vice chair, while both both hearings are important from a market perspective. Both appointments still require the full support of the Senate before they become uh, final. Uh, wrap up the day then uh, on Thursday with uh, Richmond Fed President Thomas Barkin, who's set to discuss his economic outlook at an event hosted by uh, the Richmond Chamber with Chicago Fed President Evans set to speak also at an event hosted by the Milwaukee Business Journal. Both members are set to vote again in uh, on policy in 2022. And then we round out the week in the US on Friday with retail sales. Sales increased 0.3% in November, having surged 1.8% in October. This was the fourth straight month of gains and likely a response to consumers' tendency to shop early ahead of the holidays to avoid disappointment of empty shelves. A rotation in spending from goods back to services may also remain a drag on the data. From a technical perspective, in terms of the dollar index, tracking this corrective, complex corrective pattern. Ultimately now, whilst we hold resistance 96.55, we look for a test of the equality objective. 95.08, we have monthly projected range support coming in just above there, 95.18, and we have this pivotal trend line support as well. So I'm watching for bullish reversal patterns in this area to engage on the long side, ultimately then looking for a move up into the 97.40s to 98.14 as a, uh, as an upside objective uh, versus the uh, support at the 9490s. At this stage, really, it would take a loss on a closing basis of the trend line support to suggest that we have a more meaningful high in place and we could start to think about a move back down to take a look at the yearly pivots from above at 93.89. In the Eurozone, uh, again, next week, it's largely centered around um, inflation data for December. Um, relatively light start to the week in terms of uh, data releases in the Eurozone. Um, on Monday, we do get Eurozone Centex investor confidence for January. Data is likely to show the impact of the rise in cases in mainland Europe on sentiment, especially as restrictions are tightened at the margin in most economies. Uh, Friday's final reading of French and Spanish CPI data for December uh, will be released with the first glimpse of the core measures being uh, being printed. Germany then releases its GDP data for 2021. The economy is expected to grow 2.7% over the course of the year, although it's likely that the data will be revised at a later date. From a technical perspective, in terms of the euro dollar, whilst we hold one 12.20 as support, we have an equality objective 114.09, similarly to the dollar index of monthly, or the inverse to the dollar index, sorry, we have a monthly range resistance, 114.40. Uh, so I'm watching this uh, descending trend line as well, 
coming in uh, in that zone. So watch for bearish reversal patterns in this area to engage on the short side, looking for the next leg of the downside to ultimately get a move uh, towards that 110.50 uh, support zone and the 78.6% retracement uh, I referenced in my um, live uh, trading analysis session last Thursday. You can, uh, you can catch that, uh, that video um, through the blog where we talk about that significant weekly trend line and the 78.6% retracement target zone. Uh, we don't have any uh, tier one data in terms of Japan next week. So we'll just quickly update the technicals here. And whilst we hold support at the uh, 115 level, I'm ultimately looking for another leg of upside to test the 117.30 area. We also have that quality objective target there uh, coming in at uh, 117.70, uh, monthly projected range resistance and the uh, ascending trend line resistance all coming in in that target zone so watching for bearish reversal patterns in this area to engage on the short side certainly thinking about a retest of trend line support at 115.30 and maybe a more meaningful pullback to take a look at monthly projected range support coming in 113.80 in the uk next week um, what do we have we have tuesday UK retail sector will be in scope as the BRC like for like sales data for December is released. After rising to 1.8% in November due to the impact of Black Friday and earlier seasonal shopping in order to avoid supply chain issues, sales are likely to flatline in December. And also on Friday, we get UK GDP um, for uh, GDP at 0.5% month over month for November and 7.6% year over year. Uh, mainly due to slightly faster growth in the uh, services sector. But any momentum looks set to slow temporarily in the coming months due to the spread of Omnicom. However, uh, most analysts remain optimistic that the current downtrend in infections will augur a spring rebound in activity. From a technical perspective, sterling dollar is just shy of testing the pivotal trend line resistance coming in 136.20. We have the yearly pivot just above 136.45. I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns in this area to engage on the short side. Certainly then thinking about a test of the um, monthly pivot back down to 134.14. If we can get through there and monthly projected range support prior lows in the 132 area, then we still have that open quality objective at 130. But um, initially we want to pay close attention to how price responds here at the yearly pivot. If we get a close through the yearly pivot, then I'll be switching to a more bullish stance on sterling and certainly then thinking about a retest of the 138.36 to the upside. So all eyes on the trend line test and the yearly pivot, watch for bearish reverse patterns there to engage on the short side. And wrapping it all up, down under in Australia, what do we have? Uh, most notable um, data point for next week is going to be Tuesday's Australia trade balance and retail sales data for November also released on Tuesday. After peaking in August, Australia's trade surplus is expected to continue moderating with a consensus estimate at about 1.07 billion. Uh, meanwhile, retail sales are expected to continue showing robust monthly momentum with a print of 3.8% month over month expected following October's bumper 4.9% reading. From a technical perspective, as the Australian dollar uh, holds 71.20s of support, I'm looking for another leg to the upside to ultimately get a test into the yearly pivot and the descending trend line coming in around 74.20s. From there, I'll be watching for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side. At this stage, um, the negating the uh, extended corrected move would really require a close back through that uh, 71.20 area on a closing basis, which would then set up a retest of the price cycle low 69.90 and then on down into uh, trend line support 68.60s. But like I say, whilst we hold uh, Friday's lows, then we look for another leg to the upside before engaging on the short side once again. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 10th of January. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.